Thank you for coming back and I hope to leave you with a better understanding of health, personal growth and overall wellness. I am continuously on the hunt for knowledge to make me a skilled individual in this journey we call life. So, shall we? Happy New Year. I hope 2021 will be a better year than 2020 was. One way that we can ensure a better outlook for the year ahead is by taking care of our health. Now, more than ever, we should look at the things that affect our well-being. And the one thing, you know, that tops them all is food. The fourth episode of my new series, Intermission, comes at a time when people are trying to be resolute in various goals. I'd say one of the most important ones is your health and your relationship with food. Today, we are going to talk about how you can't work off a bad diet. Your nutrition is the primary factor in weight loss, endurance training, and strength building. And no matter how you look at it, you just can't work off a bad diet. If your goal is to lose weight, beat your last time, or finish first in your next race, diet plays a significant role in that. Here is a little breakdown of what our bodies need as well as how a poor diet affects our performance and weight loss. If you have a poor diet, especially one that is high in calories, sodium, saturated fat, added sugar, processed foods, and low in carbs, then you are essentially low in vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. You will not have the energy to initiate or sustain a workout to eliminate the extra calories, sugar, sodium, and fat. Saturated fats weigh you down, makes you feel like you're wearing bricks for shoes, and a flap jacket, you know, for a shirt. You will strain to stay motivated, to endure a long enough workout to make a difference in your health and physique. Don't forget, before you work out, you need adequate fuel. That's where carbs come in. And if you're going to eat carbs, it's best to eat the type that include natural protein and fiber, such as fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. It is easier to overconsume than it is to burn it off. Some people, some people may not understand how energy dense foods can be and exactly how much you need to burn to work it off. So why bother waiting until after your workout to eat that double meat, double cheese or steak and potatoes? You might as well eat it while you're on the treadmill or between your bench presses because you just can't work off a bad diet, period. Now, for example, a person could easily eat 1,000 calories in 10 minutes. That's like a chipotle fajita bowl with all the goodies, or a burger and small fries, you know, or the steak and potatoes. But it takes 90 to 120 minutes 
or more to burn it off at an average of four to 500 calories an hour. Unless you are a serious athlete, most are not putting 100% for a full six minutes. So more than likely burning less than 400 calories an hour due to water breaks, waiting for machines, wiping machines uh, clean, checking messages, you know, checking your phone, you know, selecting music on the phone, you know, or Facebook, or just taking, you know, that obligatory, you know, Instagram pic. Since I bought this, it's given me an insight into my workouts. Before the gyms closed because of the pandemic, I'd spend two hours there going about my routine of warming up, stretching and lifting. Now when it came to the lifting part, I would always allot 45 minutes to an hour depending on what part of the body I was working on. At the end of each, ses each session, my watch would give me the breakdown of my workout and I realized that out of that whole hour I spent in the weight section, 25 minutes of those were actually spent lifting. When I started working, uh, working out from home, I realized that I was getting the same 25 minutes of useful work in a 35 minute session and I'll go about uh, useful work on a future episode uh, about managing your time and you know getting the best effort out of your workouts. Unless you enjoy counting calories and fat grams or become plant-based Many wind up underestimating calories eaten and overestimate calories burned in the gym. You have to be aware of how many calories you are ingesting or just make it simple. Go whole food plant-based or whole food plant-based vegan. Now, if you have been reading my blogs and watching my videos, you know I will always promote a plant-based lifestyle, first and foremost. If you have not yet started your plant-based journey and just now becoming plant curious, then you must be disciplined and diligent to track your calories to determine if you are breaking even, losing weight or gaining weight. You will soon realize that you can't walk off a bad diet. At a spin class, a recreational cyclist can burn four to 600 calories an hour. That is if you are close to your max watts and apply the appropriate resistance for the entire hour. An endurance athlete, such as myself, can burn upwards of a thousand calories, but that does not mean I will leave the gym and treat myself to a restaurant meal you know, after you know, my workout. My treat is a delicious bowl of homemade pasta and veggies, or a good hearty bowl of lentils with some rice. A restaurant like Chipotle does not does offer great healthy options I am a fan myself but it's all about the ingredients that you select a chipotle burrito or bowl with fajitas chicken steak or the sofrito and all the toppings will run you eight to nine hundred and fifty calories with over 2500 grams of sodium a one ounce serving of chipotle guacamole is 230 calories and 370 grams of sodium. So you can see how quickly it starts 
to add up. If you order the soft tacos or a vegan bowl, that's no meat, no dairy, you are looking at only five to six, five to 600 calories, but 1500 grams of sodium still adds up. So keep eating out to a minimum. Now you can reference those numbers that I just uh, mentioned on this link here. If you leave the gym and eat a Chipotle vegan bowl, that means you barely break even because a bowl is 500 calories and almost your full day's worth of sodium. So work out for 60 to 90 minutes and enjoy a homemade bowl of rice, lentils and veggies for half the calories and a quarter of the sodium because you control the ingredients and just watch the pounds drop away. Now I am not calling out Chipotle because it's unhealthy like I said I am a fan now, especially as a vegan I learned that they have better options than other restaurants. Just trying to show you how we can be mistaken to believe that something is healthy just because it is served on a bed of lettuce or surrounded with healthy looking ingredients that have been cooked with more than our day's worth of sodium and oil. Okay, let's look at some facts of common ingredients that affect our health goals. What you eat signals hormones to store or burn fat, boost or crash metabolism, build or break down muscle and even regulates hunger to signal your body to stop eating. If your diet consists of lots of fast food and processed foods, then you are also ingesting a lot of sugar. Sugar is stored as various fats, the kind of fats you can't work off on a bad diet. And so is a key player in obesity. For example, calories and nutrients in spinach are not the same as the ones in a pint of ice cream. Spinach triggers a hormone called glucagon, an insulin's sister hormone that releases fat to burn for energy, keeps blood sugar stable and helps you uh, keep feeling full. So your food choice either triggers hormones to protect and help your body or signals your body to release a chain of bad reactions as in fat storage, spiking insulin levels or increasing risks of chronic diseases. Dietary guidelines suggest limiting calories from added sugar to less than 10% per day. Less than that if you are active or trying to lose weight. It is always best to eat your calories not drink them because you can easily overconsume when drinking versus eating the calories. One 16 ounce can of soda contains 52 grams of sugar, which is more than the 10% guideline on a 2000 calorie a day diet. The sugar in beverages is linked to an increased amount of visceral fat. Now that's a type of belly fat associated with diabetes and heart disease. You need 
three macronutrients to sustain life carbs protein and fat and notice what i listed first carbs i did not say protein understanding your macronutrient ratio for the goal you are trying to reach is important for you for your health weight loss weight management and endurance training an endurance athlete such as a cyclist or a marathoner needs on average 50 to 65 percent carbs 20 to 30 percent fat and 15 to 25 percent uh, protein ratio a normal healthy adult would need on average 40 percent carbs 30 percent fat 30 percent protein if your goal is weight loss adjust slightly but do not remove or reduce carbs to the point where you do not have enough you know energy to to work out if you need medical advice you can locate a plant-based medical professional here carbs from whole food plant-based sources not from a box give you energy so if you are following any of those animal-based low-carb diets those foods will not provide you with sustainable energy I can personally attest to that I have a demanding job that requires my focus and the pace can get frantic at times I have to think on my feet and be able to respond to a a changing environment I can't afford to have those afternoon crashes you know that are caused by food my food choices enable me to sustain high energy levels and can stay focused on the tasks at hand then at the end of the day I can leave work and get a good workout in A diet rich in plants, legumes, grains is a natural and processed source of carbs, fat and protein to give you the energy to sustain a ride, a run or a workout or just a long day at work. We all know that protein builds and repairs muscles but it also helps you feel full and keep you mentally sharp. You want it to come from whole natural foods such as legumes, green leafy vegetables or grains you know, such as quinoa and oats. And the good news is you will not encounter the saturated fat dilemma. Here is a fan fact. Research has shown all plants contain protein and at least 14% of the total calories of every plant are protein broccoli contains more protein per calorie than steak and per calorie spinach is about equal to chicken and fish eating plant-based you may not you may need to eat more than animal source protein to get the same amount of protein and you know, and feel satiated but come on you ever hear someone complaining about having to eat more? I never have. I love to eat. <laughs> On a plant-based diet, you will probably get tired of eating because you will still be full from your last plant-based meal before it's time to eat again. As I mentioned earlier, all plant-based sources of food contain not only protein, but plenty of healthy fiber, carbs, minerals, and vitamins. If you are eating animal-based proteins, you must get your fiber and carbs from other sources because animal-based protein does not contain fiber or carbs. For those wondering, animal-based proteins do have three things in abundance saturated fat 
cholesterol, increased risk of heart disease and diabetes. Trans fats lead to obesity and increase your risk of heart disease, diabetes, and stroke, the leading killers of all adults. Just because a box or bottle says no trans fat does not necessarily mean zero trans fat. You can't walk off trans fat, so you have to stop eating them altogether to see weight loss. Labels can sometimes be misleading. It may be labeled as no trans fat, but foods containing less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving are labeled as having zero grams of trans fat. Oil sprays are labeled zero calories, zero cholesterol, no trans fat. If you use the recommended serving, and that's a quarter of a second spray, then that statement is true. Now can you count a quarter of a second spray? Keep in mind, most trans fats are formed through a process that adds hydrogen to veg vegetable oil, which causes the oil to become solid at room temperature and helps extend shelf life. So you're thinking about coconut oil, vegetable shortening. This is more widely known as partially hydrogenated oil. Some restaurants use per, you know, this oil in deep fryers so it doesn't have to be changed as often as other oils. That sounds uh, delicious, right? This is why you should avoid eating out, especially fast food restaurants. Just Cut it. Another problem with eating foods cooked and fried in oils, even the so-called healthier oils, is that all the nutrients have been stripped and calories are pure fat. You are not eating avocados in avocado oil, just like you are not eating in vegetables in vegetable oil. This is why embracing a whole food, plant-based lifestyle is the best option for your health, weight loss, and active lifestyles because you just can't lack off a bad diet. Now, the key points is to eliminate all animal products, meat, chicken, fish, dairy, eggs, go whole food, plant-based, and limit sugar, oil, salt, and processed foods. Focus on legumes, grains, fruits, and vegetables. A proper plant-based diet not only guarantees improved health and weight loss, it also affects your appearance, your mood, and sleep. You change your perception of food, a lot of things going to change for you. There are some documentaries that you can check out to learn more about the effects of food. And on Netflix you can uh, watch Game Changers on Amazon uh, from, from the ground up and that sugar film. It will get you started down the right path. Thank you for sticking around and I will see you on the next one.